We all have a story to tell. What can you learn from other people's life experiences, both winning and learning? Seeing sports, you win and you lose when the scoreboard hits zero. But in life, the clock is always ticking. So you might as well learn. Winning and learning, never losing. There's a recipe for success and there's a recipe for repeating. Self-made. Everybody is self-made. It's only successful people that want to admit it. Like, so, to me, people Ooh, say this like, no, no, oh. Say, no, say that again. That's good. Say that again. We'll be able to contribute. I want to talk about the process of life. I want to talk about life experiences. I want to talk about trusting the process. So, I just want to do my part and give back to the community, give back to the youth, and hopefully it touches somebody's lives and motivates them, and, and that's really what it's all about. What's up, what's up guys? Coach here, uh, Mark Mendez, the real estate coach. I'm um, very excited to have our first podcast today, Chalk Chalk, The Open Playbook of Life, uh, with my two co-hosts, Robert Bailey and Jennifer Serta. I'm um, super excited to be here with them. Um, I think they're going to be a great dynamic, uh, all three of us here, sharing life experiences um, with future guests coming. I um, want to give a big shout out to Elliot behind the camera, um, who's been obviously going to be behind the camera a lot of the times, but I can't leave him out of this. Um, so we also want to thank our sponsor, Alternative Solar, for allowing us to use this venue and um, just providing us the resources uh, to have, actually have this open dialogue and conversation. So, um, first and foremost, I'll introduce my co-host. Uh, to my left is Robert Bailey. Hey, how you out there? And then to my right is Jennifer Sutter. Good morning, good morning. So, uh, Chalk Talk is basically a coach's perspective, so to speak. We, we've all been coaches, or we all currently are coaches in some form or fashion. Um, myself in a public school district, uh, Robert Bailey with uh, First Step Athletics. And then Jennifer Serta, also a first step athletics at one point now, Serta Fit. <laughs> Certified Fit. Certified Fit. Certified Fit. Um, she's actually, yeah, I'm trying to get it right. She's actually my personal trainer as well. Um, and, and we can get into that at some point also. She's helped transform me uh, in a lot of different ways. So, what's going on with y'all? How y'all doing today? Excited to be here. Excited Thank to you. Be here. Yeah, absolutely. Same, same. But you forgot on your personal life coach too, so. He is my personal life coach. <laughs> he is, he is. I, I made a post the other day about how, uh, you know, we've seen some progress. Um, I saw quads in my legs, which I've never seen before. So thank you for that. Um, but he's been trying to get me on a workout regimen for a long, long time and just never really found it. So, and my post was like, it's always the random person that kind of gets you to really kind of see something else in yourself that you may not have seen before. So, um, well, today's first episode is the process. Um, I'm, as you know, uh, I'm big on the process, trusting the process, one of my biggest hashtags, not only in real estate, uh, but just in life in general. So I really just kind of want to ask you guys some questions and we just kind of go back and forth here. Uh, Bailey, what, what does the process mean uh, to you? Man, you know what, I'll tell you what, um, to me, the process really is just getting started. I think that as you get into your process, it's not a hard and fast one, two, three step. It's always flowing, it's always moving, but the biggest part is just getting started. You gotta get started somewhere. I think people, a lot of times they just get in their own way. They make up an excuse, it's not the right timing, it's not the right circumstance, not the right situation, not the right job, whatever the case may be, and they just make excuses not to start, whereas, it, you can't start the process if you don't start. You got to, you just got to go. So uh, that that's what it is for me. I couldn't say, like I said, there's no step by step. There's no playbook to it. You just got to go. Yeah, and I think that's why when the chalk talk and I said the open playbook of life, because as coaches, you know, we're like we're playbook tells us what to do. Everyone's running this play. This is what everyone has to be on the same page. And in the process of life. Not everyone is going to have a playbook, you know, and that's kind of why we're also doing this also because we want to help give a playbook, so to speak, to people that can help them start. You know, to me, the process is, is actually not even the start, so we'll get on that. But, I mean, there's like that famous saying, like, in order to take a thousand steps, you must first take one, something like that, I'm paraphrasing. So, I mean, that's interesting that the, 
the process to you, your mind automatically goes to just starting, right? So Jennifer, what do you, what is the process to you? I mean, I, I, a lot on what Bailey said, it's just being fluid. I think a lot of times we are taught that you have to have a playbook, right? Mm -hmm. You you go through these steps, you graduate college, you get a job, you and almost at 40, I'm just not realizing that that's not the way it is. That's mm -hmm. not the way um, it is for me, at least. You right. know what I mean? Some of us are outside of that box. Um, and being accepting of that because of what society puts on us, that you should do this and that society playbook. That's a whole nother podcast. Right? <laughs> society society yeah. playbook. But just realizing that I have to be fluid in the season of my life. When you say fluid, like, what do you mean? Like um, That things are going to change every day. You know, I used to have this A, B, C, D kind of linear progression that I thought that life had to be. And I'm just now realizing that that's, that's not it, you know? It's not it for my life. Um, it goes here, it goes here, it goes there, it goes there. But my end result is still gonna be the finish line, you know what I mean? Okay. So just being fluid in that sense, not beating myself up. I think a lot of times we beat ourselves up more than anybody else because we didn't take this step or what we thought we should have done. Or what um, we thought our parents or somebody exactly. some outside Exactly, letting go of those chains. I mean, at 40 years old, I'm just realizing that I have to let go of some of those change, chains that my parents put on me. Not negative, but not nonetheless, no wrong wrong, right? exactly. like they, nonetheless they they're chains, right? They're chains of what they thought that their life should have been, so this is the way your life needs to be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so just being fluid, yeah. trusting the process and being fluid and um, going five, four, three, two, one and going, you know, that's I, I think that's good because that's two different dynamics. Like you're saying start it and you're saying like be able to be fluid in it. Yeah. And my thing with the process is there's certain uh, ingredients, so to speak, that in everybody's process should or needs to be um, always there. If you talk about sacrifice, dedication, mm -hmm. commitment. Those are ingredients in the process. Right. Now you talked about your end goal is always going to be the same. And, and one of the first things I learned about the process is when I started listening to Inky Johnson. All right, if you don't know Inky Johnson's story, I, I would highly recommend you You know, uh, Google him, one of the top motivational speakers in the world. His story is the process changed his life because he, he was a you know came from a fourteen. There was like fourteen or sixteen living in a one bedroom, two bedroom apartment. One at the foot, one at the head. Foot, yeah, one at the foot, one at the head, and um, he was like, my whole goal was to make the NFL. Why? Because I had to get out of where he was at. You know, I had uncles living in a house, in and out of jail, prison. So that's just the thing that he saw, mm -hmm. and that was that was his outside influence, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you said something really important that you you know your family, and I think this is big. Um, as I'm getting in the entrepreneurial world, my family's not, they're, they're more scared for me than they're really, it's not that they're not supportive, mm -hmm. but they're like, oh, uh, you know, you're not working a nine to five. Because, <laughs> I'm going to tell you something about that, go ahead. But yeah, but that's, that's, that's what our, that's what our, gener the generations above us is like, hey, go to college, get a job, or, you know, get a degree, yeah. and do something with your life, right? And I mean, if I look at it now, as much as I love teaching and coaching, I'm not using my degree. And I'm sixty-seven thousand dollars in debt now. You know, like that's a that's like sorry, um, but that, I mean, it, you know, that's what we're told to do. Right, right. And it's not necessarily if you have an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial mindset, especially as young people. You know, I, I've I've seen some hungry kids. You know, hungry kids that that whatever they decide to do, they're going to be successful in. But their family's like, no, don't do that. Like that's that's not that's not gonna make you money. That's not gonna you know. And that's why I'm a big person on your gift plus your why plus your purpose. You have to find your gift. We all have one. You have to find your why. You know, what wakes you up in the morning is your why, right? Like coffee, sort of. Exactly. And then I think ultimately you and your purpose. You know. Um, so what are you gonna say about it? It's funny that you say that because you know here I am on my own doing my personal training thing, doing my coaching thing. Um, and at least once a week, my mom's like, well, when are you going to get a real job? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? This yeah. is a real job. It's you, like, I, make, I make more money than a lot of people right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But to her, it's not a real job because it's not that nine to five. It's right. not that Monday through Friday. It's not that benefits type of thing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, and so there is that fear, you know, even though like, hey, mom, I'm doing this and I got this working, I got this. Right. And I, you know, she's like, that's good, that's good. But when are you going to get a real job? Yeah. 
<laughs> and so it, it's it's I, I tell this to the older people too, and maybe you can harp on this a little bit, like that's what they were taught. We only know what we, we know, right? So when you talk about breaking curses, I, I call it breaking generational curses. Right. And like you said, it doesn't always have to be like an alcoholism, you know, um, drug abuse. That, that, those are generational yeah. curses in itself. But the, and I, I hate to say broke mindset, but the the nine to five mindset, the, the like you have to work for somebody else type of mindset. Mm -hmm. And that's okay for some people. Like, you know, if there's kids that want to be a doctor, Go be a doctor, then you need to go yeah, to school, right? Absolutely. But if you don't, if you can't even, I used to tell kids all the time, if you can't finish your history homework, you know what I mean? Like, history homework, I'm giving you time in class to finish it. And you want to start your own career, you want to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you don't have no inner drive. And that doesn't mean they can't find it, but it's like, at some point, I really believe the habits, the process is started at a young age. Yeah. Um, and if you don't figure out or someone doesn't come into your life, to show you a different way of the process, then you can get stuck in that rut and just figure you have to do those type of things for forever, you know? And then that's why you have people that are not happy. Mm -hmm. I know you used to work uh, at a job, right? Roadhouse and, and other places. Um, I know you work in jobs right now and that I'm not gonna call no names. I mean, you just look, <laughs> look at your face. You're just not happy, right? And, and there's things that we're working on to get you out of that so you can enjoy your passion or something that you really love to do because it's not waking up and clocking in so to speak every day right so talk about that um yeah i mean my process right now is definitely not something that I, i'm not passionate about it right. i do it because i have to do it honestly for me this is a topic down the road but that's my adversity every single day just trying to get through that um but yeah i mean to touch back on what you were talking about with you know the nine to five, the you know, graduate high school, go to college, whatever the mm -hmm. case may be. I don't want to necessarily discount people who do that. I mean, Absolutely your sister's not. a perfect example. Yeah. She's yeah. highly successful. She's followed those steps and she's living a great life from you know, from what I can tell. Shout out to my sister, to. USA. And I love USA. USA, my parents, <laughs> my parents both retired from USA. You know, my sister's there for uh, yeah. 20 years. So, but they're, yeah, I, I'm not discounting that at all. Right. But. To me, it's like you find a gift, right? And you right. have a gift, and I don't think it's necessarily doing what you're doing, and you know that, right? Yeah, for sure. And so that's your adversity, like you said. So how are you going to overcome? How do you overcome that adversity in the process? Like what? So we we talk about processes being fluid and changing, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you think you could do? Someone that's in your situation that may be stuck or doing it because they have a family and have to provide, and they can't really take that risk. What, what would you kind of tell them if they... Well, it just goes back to what Sir was saying. Just keep focused on the goal. I, I sit there every day and I get lost in the 9 to 5. It's not even 9 to 5, it's 7 to 6. And I'm like, man, what am I doing here? It's a day-to-day -day type deal. I have to take a deep breath and say, you know, what is my end goal? Where am I trying to get out of this? I need to use this situation as my vehicle to get out of here. Not necessarily just do this because I have to and get to the day to day, but realize, okay, if I can get this goal met and this goal met, then this will mean I can get out of this situation and I need to take advantage of that. I just sit back, take my lumps, whatever I gotta do to move forward. Okay. So, I mean, I think the thing about when I was talking about Inky, he's like, he said, he said the process changed his life because his end goal changed. He, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with Inky. Mm -hmm. So he, you know, obviously has no use of his whole right arm and he was like, but everything he did, sacrifice, dedication, working out, his mom worked at Wendy's, had to flash the lights on for him, you know, to work out. When all that changed, you know, like he could no longer be in the NFL, he was no longer gonna be a first round draft pick. He was like, my process, because I had did the process correctly, my end goal changed, but my life was made better for it. And that's why he's such a top motivational speaker now, right? So. When you say it's fluid, what are the certain ingredients or what are the certain things on a day-to-day -day basis that you think are absolute not fluid? Um, I mean, you have to have you have to have self-motivation first of all, first and foremost. You know, uh, being in in a role where it isn't a nine-to-five, you are your own boss. You have to have that drive because nobody's going to tell you to clock in or clock out. Nobody's going to tell you. You have if you're not here, you, you're gonna get written up or documented or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, self-discipline, you know, um, motivation. Uh, I think that you can teach a lot of things, but I do not think, and, and I'm just saying, I'm just saying oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that you can teach hustle. You know, I feel like you, you have it or you don't. You know, yeah. urgency, a sense of urgency. I don't think that that can Can't be taught. teach hustle. Bro. I don't think that can be taught, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's probably one of the biggest things is just discipline. Discipline. Um, and, hustle, and hustle, you know. Discipline, hustle, and, and a vision. What are your key ingredients to the process that says? Uh, two things that I love that Sarah said. She said motivation and she said drive. Those are two different aspects of getting to whatever goal you have. Motivation just gets you started, like they said. So the drive is what will push you to that end goal. Um, I would say listening to ET, one thing that really stuck with me that he would harp on as well is just being diligent. Yeah. Like, and that can be a wide variety of you know situations or uh, tasks that you have to get done mm -hmm. in order to reach your goal. Okay. It, whether you like it or not, you gotta be diligent. You have to go through the process. What's right? another word for diligent? Uh, I guess something like consistent. Consistency, um, okay, I like that. Which, I mean, that goes back into your drive. I'm trying to education that kind of gets me off on the diligent <laughs> thing, you know. Like UTSA, like, oh, I guess UTSA. Yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something too that, you know, FSA that we have on a shirt that I, I think about all the time is interested or committed. You know, uh, that commitment piece there, that, I mean, that's something I tell myself every day. Am I interested or am I committed to this? You know what I mean? Is this a hobby? Or is this what's going to feed me at night? You know what I mean? So, so if you don't know Sarah's journey, um, she actually started working out with us at FSA as right. a client. Mm -hmm. And then just found this fire, just lit a fire. Not to say it was us, because I do believe it's every, you know, everything's internal, like you said. But, you know, you just recently competed in a... Um, what is this? Um, a bodybuilding. Bodybuilding competition. Congrats. You, you, you actually won some. Two. I got to, to, to come two trophies. It was like 21 and under awards. Like <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> no, well, tell them what Se you So, second place in um, 35 and up. Okay. Um, and then the fourth place in novice. So. Okay. And first time competing. And first time competing. I'll take it. Yeah. Novice means. Um, just brand brand new to it. Plus, yeah, I gotta stop using these big words. Brand, brand new to the you know my very first show, my very awesome. first competition. So. So I really want to talk about that for a second because if we're talking about the process, kind of my next topic is like, when did you realize your. your when did that process or that fire start for you and, and why, like what changed? Um, you know, I think that you have to have an alignment with your mind, your body, and your soul, right? And so I felt like my soul, something was missing, my spirit, something wasn't, wasn't right, you know? And um, when I started the working out process, that really just helped get the body right and mm -hmm. which kind of poured over into the soul, the spirit, you know what I mean? Okay. So um, that just kind of transformed me from the outside in, if you will. It was an outlet for me, a positive outlet for me. Um, I had a, a life tragedy happen shortly, about a month after I started working out with FSA. Um, and I kind of went in the down, downhill uh, spiral where I was just out every night, drinking every night. I mean, I have two kids. You know, that just wasn't conducive. Who was wasn't a kid? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mind your business. No, I'm just kidding. Not um, so, you know, I, I knew I wanted more for my life. I knew that that wasn't adding any value to my life. I knew that they deserved more. Um, so that's when I turned to fitness and, and kind of just that became my escape, my release, and then um, my passion. So would, you, so would you say you found your why? I found my why. I did find my wife did that. I'm just saying. Yeah. Purpose. So, um, Bailey, uh, you were a college athlete, so you've obviously played at a level that I mean, I don't, I don't know what the percentages are, but I, I played college football too. There's not a lot of us that did it, and you know, I'd be the first to say I played Division three. You know, where we paid basically. You know, they found us, you know, grants and stuff. Mm -hmm. But in fact, I, we used to always talk when Division three was. Where some of us are more hungry than the guys that are on D2, D1, because we're literally paying to play football. Mm -hmm. And it was a great experience of life and winning the conference championship at Hardy Simmons, but you were an athlete, so you played at a high level, right? Um, what, when did you realize, did it just come naturally as like, 
were you just always dedicated? Did you already have those ingredients of sacrifice, or or where did you draw from that to realize this is this I am in a process? Did you even realize you were in a process? I guess no, I really didn't. I mean, <clears throat> from a young age, I mean, I played sports since I was a little kid, and I think when we played at Columbia, mm -hmm. I mean, those the people that were in charge at that time. They were truly working on young men, developing Absolutely. young men. Even though we would win, that was great. You know, that's what as a kid, that's what that, you want to do. But you don't realize until you you sit back and you like when I got to UMHB, and I'm like, man, these coaches were talking about the same stuff they were talk, talking about when I was nine years old. And I never knew that at this level now is just as important as it was then. But I had that foundation in place, and there's a lot of guys that would fall off and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Because my only assumption is this is the first time that they're hearing these types of things, that they need to follow this process. Because when you get to college, you know what it is. It's, it's a job, basically. Right. Like, it's wake up, work out, go to class, go back to practice, watch film, go to practice, watch more film, and you do it all over again every, every single day. day. And some people can't follow that process. Mm -hmm. um, but from a young age, it was instilled in me, like, this is what you have to do. You have to be at practice at this time. We're going to run two laps around just with conditioning. Like, oh, my. I'll never, never get in two laps around the whole thing, right. bro. You just think, like, you're being oh, punished. I was always, a, okay, first of all, Columbia's pretty big. Okay, don't do me like that, okay? I've, I've, seen it. I've always been a heavy set guy. It's pretty Kid. Big. So, I was like, I was always the last. I was always one of the last, you know? I do believe that. But anyway, back to my point. Was that when you I finished, kid, though. I finished. Okay. When you're a kid, hard. you just think, man, this is just, coaches are hard on us. They're mm -hmm. just trying to make us work hard, make me tired. And now look at that. Like, these dudes are really telling us that we have to, we have to start somewhere. We have to do the same things every day in order to get to, you know, our end goal, which was always trying to get championship, right? Mm -hmm. But if we didn't run those two laps every day and know that's what we're supposed to do, how are we going to get in games and know, okay, this is my job on this play every single time? I didn't even take it like that. If you know, run those two laps, I'm like, we still probably would have won. But now that you said that, like you said, that's knowing the, the discipline aspect. Knowing the, pro the discipline aspect. So what you said something real quick, though, is um, at a young age, you, you, you were, we were taught this at Columbia. And then when we played college ball, it was very similar, right? So do you think sort of that um, it has to be taught at a young age? Or do you, I mean, obviously, I, I would think it, it helps, right? I believe those seeds should be planted at a young age, but not everybody has um, those investors. Not everybody has those planters. Well, Michael, you, said you know investors. what I mean? To to pour into to the youth or the children, you know, uh, unfortunately. Um, so sometimes as an adult, that's the first time that we're hearing certain things. Um, and we didn't have that, those those plant, planted seeds at a young do you, age. Do you think it comes from uh, uh, adversity? Like, Say, say you don't have someone pointing to you. Say you don't have the coach that mm -hmm. changed your life, the, the teacher, the parent, uncle, whoever it may be, right? Do you think that, what, what is the only thing that can change you changing yourself? Um, I think it's just seeing what you want for yourself. So when I say that, I feel like a lot of people, um, I think we're the exception, right? Uh, there's a lot of people that don't have as many fortunes as we do, right? Mm -hmm. Even though we have our own adversities and our own struggles. Mm -hmm. um, it just comes to a point where, and I say this, you get tired of your own shit, you know? And you, oh, hey, and, we're a family. Sorry. We're a family. And, you want, <laughs> and you, want to make your own, you want to make your change. So <clears throat> it may come through adversity. It may be like, I'm tired of living this life. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of struggling. Um, you know, I, I read something the other day that said generational wealth starts with one risk taker, you know, That's and, good. and I believe that. I felt, I'm going to start. I felt that one. I'm, it's about, to, one I'm risk about to get emotional so, on that one. So though you may have adversity, it just comes to a point where some people have that drive to make that change. Mm -hmm. And some people just accept their situation and, and, and that's good enough for them, you know. And that's okay too. Like that's okay too. some right. people, like their motivation or their why is their kids, their family, mm -hmm. and they don't want to take a risk. It's so I that's think it's okay. okay to live in a comfort zone as far as like I don't want to get so much on a job and money because I believe your purpose will make you know yeah. the Bible says your, your gift will make room for you, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't want to get into much like oh quit your job or you know go beyond the door, go make more money. <laughs> But there's somebody out there listening that 
it's not their job, it, it's their family. It's their, um, it's something else that is their why. And, and, and my thing is like, you have to challenge yourself in life mm -hmm. as some aspect of your life, right? Like, so breaking generational curses or being the risk taker, um, maybe it's sticking out of marriage, right? Like maybe it's like not being the, the one that, That's true. that gets divorced when everyone else has been divorced. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's the one that finishing school, finishing school yeah. you know, even if you maybe not want it, like that's a certain um, accomplishment that you can now somebody else, a little cousin, I don't have any kids, I don't, I, I'm not married. So a lot of what I do, obviously, um, in my mindset, taking this risk and doing the things that I do now, my back was against the wall. And maybe one day that story we'll talk about, but I didn't have a choice, so to speak, right? Like I, I had to, and I started to realize Maybe I do have a great, a bigger purpose, and 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 God was pushing me towards it. And um, now I think about like my, I'm trying not to get emotional. But I, I, now I think about my little cousins, like my cousin. And I, they're not little, they're like grown, but you know, like what can I do for them? Some of them may not be as motivated. Some of them, they may be in that, you know, maybe your situation where they're, they're doing something they don't want to do. And I want to be the one that provides. Okay, what's your passion? Okay, you, you like to cook, let's, let's, let's open up a food truck or, or a restaurant. You know, you like to cut hair, let's open up a barbershop. You know, like I want to be the one that's able to do that for them because ultimately I just want people to live in their gift and in their purpose and then we can figure out the rest later. Um, so I don't know where I was going with that, but what you mentioned about that, the, the generations and breaking those things, like I think that's a big thing because people are out there and again, it's not about money. It's about finding whatever, whatever your why is and doing it right for them or for whoever it is. Yeah, because I mean, I know you, we all went to the ET conference. And oh man! I met that dude in the parking lot, looked like a regular guy. It turns out he he gets to stand up in the front because he's a CEO of two hospitals. And I'm sitting there like, man, I, I work for an athletic training company. This guy's a CEO of two hospitals, and he's in the same boat. Like he's trying to figure out. What is he doing? Like, what's his purpose? Where does his drive? Like, why? Why is this dude here? He's highly successful in my eyes. This dude's making probably close to seven figures. Right. But we're in the same. We're all in the same boat. We're all trying to. We're in the same conference. Something. Right. Yeah. It's, you know, it's whatever. And that's 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 the greatest point right there. Is like it doesn't have to be about money. So this dude's making dumb money, but yeah. he probably has different, you know, um, demons, adversity, demons, challenges, exactly. whatever the case is. And to to touch on your point about uh, your little cousins. I was talking to a good friend of ours yesterday, Ben, and uh, his wife, you know, her business is taking off. Yeah. And he still, like, I asked him a question probably two years ago, like, what is your purpose? And he still, like, he, he brought it up last night. He's like, hey, you know, man, like, really? I still don't even know. And it's like, this dude's my age. He's, he's basically just trying to help his wife out, get her business started, but he still hasn't found it within himself. And sometimes, it's been two years since I asked him that question. He still hasn't figured it out. But the fact that I asked him that question still has his mind turning like, what is my purpose? What am I, what am I here on earth to do? Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. Like, if you've never asked your cousins, like, what do you like to do? Maybe they just get stuck in the day to day. And right. I work at, you know, whatever it is, Whataburger or whatever. And they're going to work their way up because they're good people. Mm -hmm. But that's not their drive. It's not their passion. It's their purpose because no one's even asking the question. They yeah. don't even put any thought into it. So when you talk about, by the way, that business started in my house, I was that the eyelash mega business started in my the fourth bedroom in my house. I'm just saying, um, I need Patsy. I need some uh, some residuals. That's the rugs and all that. But so, but what I if, you know, we talk about Ben, and you'll probably listen to this. Hopefully, one you know, but he did take a risk. Like he was in the same industry as you were. He took a risk of I don't know what I'm about to do. And maybe he has that comfortability because maybe he managed money or I'm sure they managed money very, very well. And that's why he was able to step away from that job where he was making very good money. And he's still trying to figure himself out, which is to me, man, I, I, I commend it. That's a joy in itself, I would think. Like, not maybe not a joy, but it's like, um, it's to be commended that he took that risk and he's yeah. still you know, trying to figure it out, mm -hmm. you know, and he's doing a great job. I, I mean, that woodworking and stuff, that's, that's great. So, um, hi, 
I'm Eric with Alternative Solar, and I'm excited to announce our new Texas giveaway. So here's how it works. For the next 100 homeowners who join our solar family in the next two months and bring one referral with them that joins, will be entered into our raffle. Now what's the giveaway? A brand new Tesla. Yes, I said that correct. A brand new Tesla. I'm sure you're wondering, well, what's the catch? Well, the catch is we have to guarantee you and your referral long-term savings. And to show you how confident we are that we can, as well as make the deal worth it, we are willing to pay you $100 for getting a quote if we can't save you money. So why not take a chance to win a brand new Tesla, save money, and do it all for zero down? Click on the link below to get a free quote. Do it the right way, do it better, go with the alternative. process you know throughout this uh, first episode and I just really believe it's a foundation to people you mentioned getting started um, you mentioned it ever changing um, and whatever that is um, you have to start a process and you have to figure out your process right um, I like what you said about earlier motivation is what gets you started and then what did you say after that drive is what, drive is what keeps keep you going, going right um, David Groggins, a uh, book I, that I listened to, mm -hmm. you know, that was good. He's like, F motivation. Motivation is temporary. Mm -hmm. And I think people lose sight of that. Like, as a someone that I consider to try to motivate people, I try to motivate them daily, right? Because who who I maybe, or we, we I should say we, who we motivated as some yesterday, maybe they're starting, but then the next day there's someone that didn't start yesterday. So I think that's why what we do and what we're trying to do with the podcast is to continue to put out motivational content where people can listen to this. And, and it, you just, you know, as a teacher and a coach, I was like, if I change one kid's life, then I did my job, right? And so that's kind of, I think, what we're doing. In that, I guess my next question would be is, is and I'll go to you, Charlotte, first. Who, who do you think influence, like obviously yourself, self-motivation? Sure. Who did you either look up to, um, either in terms of like your family or outside resources? Who do you think shaped your process the most? Um, I think lately I've just really been surrounding myself with like-minded people. So I can't say it's been one particular person per se. We have to. That's um, the question. But it's been <laughs> it's no. been a group of people um, that actually I've met through you guys, through you know Jared, yourself, um, Coach Mercer. Uh, Sean, you know, just people that are entrepreneurs that I look to them for advice. I look mm -hmm. to them for, I mean, I reach out to them daily, weekly. Hey, what do you think about this? What about your process? Not because I want to mimic it, but they've been successful in certain regards. And so um, what's that one one saying? If you're in a room with millionaires, then you're the, you're the sixth millionaire. If there's a room of five, you know, mm -hmm. if you're in a room with five idiots, you're the sixth idiot. You know what I mean? So I'm trying I like to. to say it too. I'm like, what room are we in? I'm kind of. Well, yeah, what room are we in? So we're in between. I've heard it. I've heard it put like this. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room type of thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the same thing, same right? Way. But, you know, like birds of a feather flock together type that's of right. thing. So, okay, I like that. Um, <laughs> Idiots in the That's what I read. Millionaires and idiots. What book was that? I was on Instagram. Idiot. Idiot. I know, like, she, she looked hard at me on idiots, right? I'm like, dang. Instagram wisdom. I need a new, I need a new uh, personal trainer. I feel personally attacked right now. So, who um, has shaped my process? Just a lot of like minded people recently. You said something about not trying to copy other people's process, or you asked them not to copy. As coaches, um, especially you know sports, it's like uh, there's only 11 people on the field, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, we, you know the NFL is called a copycat league. Mm -hmm. Whoever's successful, mm -hmm. people start doing yeah, it, yeah. and then when it doesn't become successful, then they go to the new fad, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, football's been played for so long, and I will draw sports a lot. That's just me, but um, there's only 11 people on the field. And basketball players only five, and on soccer field is mm -hmm. only what 11, nine. Eleven. Eleven. So I'm not a soccer guy, but hockey, I don't know, right? The point is, the game's been played for so long. There's only so much you can do, right? But you you can draw, and as coaches, um, I think you should be able to see another playbook, so mm -hmm. to speak, 
and then adjust it to your own, mm -hmm. right? So, Bailey, I'll, I'll ask you the question next. Who shaped your process the most, or uh, either in the past or currently? Man. Other than myself, of course. <laughs> Okay. Says my oh, man, I'm talking about life coach, I forgot. And I don't even know where I can begin. There's so many different checkpoints in my life that I could say, you know, this person was highly, you know, influential. Talk about people. your young checkpoint first. My young checkpoint? It's it's a little it's it's very close to home, but it taught me uh not so much what I wanted to be, but what I didn't want to be. So I know which, you, know, you know, that may be counterintuitive or whatever the case may be. I don't want to get too deep into it, right. but I've, just to bring it all back, I'm in the mindset that you can learn from every person that you meet, positive and negative. Mm -hmm. So you can use that to, you know, uh, formulate your own personality, drives, whatever. Uh, so that was my young checkpoint. Um, as, you know, growing up through adolescence, high school, definitely coaches, huge influence. We spend ton of time at school, mm -hmm. whether it be football, basketball, track, whatever. They all have different, you know, their own experiences and uh, family situations or whatever. Uh, some of them were, you know, on one end, way left. And some of them, you know, uh, what was it called? Um, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. So, okay. you know, a broad range of guys that have been through a lot of the similar things that I've been through now mm -hmm. that I can draw from, okay, this coach, you know, he taught me this, or mm -hmm. positively or negatively, so to speak. Um, as a young adult, man, I had a long relationship with a young lady that it was uh, detrimental to my growth. And it's not because she was a bad person or, uh, you know, we weren't abusive to each other. That's not clearly not your wife now. Right? The problem was that I got way too comfortable in that situation. She was enabling me to be in like a vegetative state, so to speak, mentally, wow. physically, emotionally. And when we broke up, man, I thought it was the end of the world. And then three months later, I'm like, man, this was probably the best thing that could have ever happened to me, addition by subtraction, because now I realize, man, I was lacking on this, 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 and this, and now I'm getting on the right path, I'm getting on a new process to become a better young adult. And then obviously when I met you, I mean, specifically uh, another person that we know, Richard, man, I never knew what a leader was until I met that dude. Like, at craziest circumstances to meet somebody who would really teach me about management of other people, being able to dive into other people, wearing different caps, being able to relate to them, and motivating them to be the best that they can be. Richard's the type of dude who can dog you out, and you get out of that meeting 15 minutes later, and you feel pumped up, ready to go, and like, man, look, this dude just told me. But yeah, man. One of my players is custom me probably more, the only other person that's custom me more on the sideline is Moose, but Richard. Probably. Yeah. But I think we should talk about Richard for a second because if we talk about entrepreneurship and that's kind of where we've leaned a little bit today, Richard started at Whataburger, flipping burgers. Started on the mop. On the, oh, on the mop. See, I didn't even know that. I thought it was just flipping. But Richard started at Whataburger as his regular employee and worked his way all the way up to an area manager. And I, I, you know, we've seen his daughters grow up. I ended up teaching his daughter my last year in school. And I used to tell the story all the time because it's like whatever you whatever you do, if you do the process correctly, mm -hmm. like he's he's a leader no matter what he does. Yeah, right. And so what that what he learned at an early age taught him and then I mean he was definitely making double what I was making as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have no degree. He didn't have anything like that, right? So like that's an example in itself right there to tell you it doesn't have to be an entrepreneur, it doesn't have to be a, a big company. You know, if you really be be who you are and trust the process, be the natural born leader that he is, he worked his way all the way up, right? And he, you know, so that's a great example of that because I mean, man, that's Richard is he's a great guy. He cusses me a lot on the football field, but I'm talking about that. <laughs> so, uh, sir, one of the other last things, what would you say to someone to motivate them to or? I don't like to keep using the word motivate, but to start that process. First, you got to understand your purpose, your why, right? Um, for a long time, I didn't know. I was lost, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of going through the day by day in a, a job that I didn't care to be in, in a relationship that 
and you know Bailey touched on it, it if you don't have that right person by your side, it literally sucks the life out of you. And that's in any relationship, whether it's a romantic, whether it's a friendship, whether it's a family member. If they are not feeding into you the proper way, um, it sucks. It sucks the life out of you, right? So, um, to to just start the process, know your know your purpose, um, have a have a game plan, an end goal, but don't be too rigid on the steps, right? Be fluid with them. Know that I'm at A, I want to get to B, but it may take me a few different steps, mm -hmm. you know, and, and have grace with yourself, you know? Do you think people uh, focus too much on the end goal? Like, I think, I think a lot of young people will say, well, I want to be married at this age, I want to have this college degree at this age. Is that what you mean about being fluid? Or like I, I think so. I think, yeah, I mean, it does because you have, um, and again, I feel like it's society putting these, these parameters on you, right? Mm -hmm. um, to have be married by this age, to have kids by this age, and I feel like we're moving towards a little away from that now. Let me ask you a deep question: yeah. You think society putting that, or you think it's us looking at society and putting it on ourselves? I think it's a combination of both. Deep. I think it's a combination of both. You okay. know? Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, I always felt that if I wasn't, if I didn't have kids by this age, that I wasn't doing something right. Or if I didn't, wasn't married by this age, and I was doing something right, doing something right. So, um, well, where does that come from? Is what I'm saying. A lot of it, my parents. Okay. You know what I mean? I mean, I think I'm pretty sure my parents have only been in a relationship with each other. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> You're pretty you know, sure. I'm pretty sure. Um, you know, they've been married for almost 50 years. Wow. You know, so. Uh, from a young age, it was, you're going to go to school, you're going to get a job, you're going to get married, you're going to have a family, you're going to have two kids, a boy and a girl. You know what I mean? Like, that's how it was. Hey, but you did have two kids, <laughs> a boy and a girl. I mean, that was my luck. <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, what was the question? <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> I was uh, no. No, left. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine, though. This, this is good because well, my question to that is, now you made me forget my question. When you said that, when you said that about your parents, because it's not their fault because they learned it from their parents, right? Yeah. Why? 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 Who has to change that, or why do we have to change that mindset? I think that's not the way it is now. <laughs> you know, people are starting later, and it's okay. Um, yeah, mom, not having kids. To not live by somebody else's expectations oh. or somebody else's that's playbook, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what happens a lot of times. For me, you know, I was felt I had to live by this playbook, but it wasn't my playbook. And right. so things never really lined up and I never they never sat well with me in my spirit because that wasn't my destiny. That right. wasn't that wasn't my path. Yeah. Or somebody else's path. Do you, uh, so other people's life experiences, you can, I mean, I think it's good to uh, see other people. I posted last time on Facebook when I was thinking about this podcast, like, man, take joy in other people's success. Of course. Because at some point you're going to be in a valley, but if you, someone, at the same time you're in a valley, someone's going to be on a mountaintop. And if you can take joy from seeing someone else's success, it's not that you're trying to be them or you're not trying to, you, you shouldn't feel bad for yourself, but it should give you hope. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, a lot of people I was selling real estate, you know, I'm doing pretty well right now. And people see me holding up the key, you know, with the families and stuff. But they don't know the process. Mm -hmm. They don't know how hard it was to get to that point. Mm -hmm. People will always see, you know, and they just say we live in a society where Instagram, Facebook. And I try to be transparent as much as possible without ever getting too deep in, you know, in my own personal life to try to motivate other people. But it's like... If you if you don't have the valleys, you know you can't appreciate the, the the highs, right? But you can't let that be, like you said, you can't copy someone else's playbook. Mm -hmm. um, baby, touch on that for a little bit. Like, uh, do you think we too much of a society worry about what other people are doing instead of keeping our blinders on? Totally, yeah, man. Totally. I mean, social media got you thinking everybody's out there just living on boats and. Doing all kinds of crazy stuff in San Jose. Oh, you talking about me? Um, yeah, that's one of those people. Wow. But anyways, um, yeah, people, everybody sees a trophy. They don't, they don't see the work that you put in. Um, 
certain great example they see her on stage, but they don't know, you know, she's up 5 a.m. grinding. Ryan trying to get her physique to where she wants it to be. I saw her. She was mad every morning. You know her. You know these are the two. F f I'm hungry. That's all she tells me while I'm working out, bro. I'm oh, hungry because she's hungry. always working out, right? <laughs> why don't people? Why don't people post their their valleys more? You think? I think it's just all about status, really. I mean, nobody wants to look so. My, my hoodie, shout out to myself for making this. Um, self-made. Everybody is self-made. It's only successful people that want to admit it. Like, so, to me, people Ooh, say this like, no, oh. No, say, no, say that again. That's good. Say that again. Self-made. There's only, everyone's self-made. Only successful people want to admit it. So, That's I wear cool. this and people think, well, you know, at work, I don't, I'm not trying to my horn, but, like, I'm fit. Like, I, I work out, I put on the work, whatever, and everyone's like, uh, you got muscles, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, I don't wear this as like a, a crowning jewel, but right. I wear this as like a, like a, almost like a, like a cross, so to speak. Like, I am who I am because I made this. Whether that's good or that's bad, good, bad, ugly, you know, because I'm not, I'm not perfect. I, there's plenty of things that I wish, you know, maybe at this time I would have done that or worked a little harder at this situation or whatever the mm -hmm. case may be. That all molded me to the person I am. It's not just, this outward appearance or uh, maybe the way I handle certain situations in, in, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's just, it's, you, you mold who you are. You truly do. And if you can own that, that that's the first thing. This is self-reflection. You know what I mean? Like, Ooh, yeah, you can realize where, where you've, you've gone wrong and the successes that you've done. You don't get too high, you don't get too low, and you keep focused on your goal. You follow your process, whatever that is. And, like like Jen said, if you swerve out with it and you get back on path, as long as you have, this is A, this is B, how am I going to get there? And you, you're willing to just to continue work forward. It's progress, not per perfection is something that we've talked about before. Um, but people, they just, as far as, you know, putting, you know, certain things out there, they only want you to see the very best in them. And you can't measure yourself against somebody else, like you said, because... That person could be on Instagram or standing on top of a mountain, but deep inside you can know that their, you know, their mother or father passed away from COVID recently or whatever, and they're struggling through all kinds of stuff. That's just a coping mechanism for them. You shouldn't just base it like because of a photo or a post or what, whatever it is. Man, that's that. What you said, we only successful people want to share like they're self-made, right? Because most people will, will um, always attribute to circumstance, right? Mm -hmm. Why well, didn't have the best? opportunity you know um you know i didn't come from a two-parent household or whatever it may be right it's always somebody else's reason why they're not successful or and not doing what they're supposed to be doing right in life um i believe we're all we're a product of our choices our life is a product of our choices and mm -hmm. what we choose you know every choice has a consequence and consequences is i think has such a bad kind of derivative is that the word I was just that's my worst man. Just connotation. Connotation? connotation. There you go. Okay. <laughs> hey, what? Hey. Derivative from like uh, tangent. <laughs> John Jay, John Jay, baby, John Jay. But the point is, um, I think consequences has a bad bad time. Connotation. Connotation is there's good and there's good and bad consequences. Yeah. It's some my students are like, well, I'm not gonna do my homework. I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't care. You don't care. No, that's your choice. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have to. You don't have to. I like freak out. Like I don't have to. No, but when you got a zero mm -hmm. in the grade book, that's the choice you chose, mm -hmm. right? So causation effect. Exactly, cause and effect. So, um, just to kind of wrap it up here, my last little thing is, um, just because I'm blind, guys, work with me. I'm gonna get better at this. Um, what would you, what, I don't need glasses, I have contacts, this is, I have bad eyes. Glasses and contacts? <laughs> <laughs> so we're, it's not going to always be serious here, you know, so, um, what's the, what's the last thing you would like to say, um, just kind of closing up and wrapping up, sort of, about the process? What, when you think the process and, and what you want to leave people with today's episode, what, what would you like to leave them with? The process is forever changing. You know, the process forever changing yourself. Um, the moment that you become stagnant, it's time to kind of 
reel it back in, go back to the drawing boards for me, um, and start the process again. So. Okay. Bailey, what would you leave people with? Find a goal and get started. That's it. Start your process. Okay. And I think for me, the, the, the last thing I say is like draw from others' life experiences. The reason why I want to have guests, the reason this is not just me, the reason it's Serta and it's Bailey, because we've all had a different life experience. We've all had a different process. It started at a different age for all of us. You know, you saying a lot older, Bailey started younger. Um, I guess I would be kind of in the middle, but the point is life experiences are always going to allow you to draw. I think, that, and I'll say this many times, I think it's done when people say, I have to go through it myself to learn. No, you, no, you don't. Like, you went through something, you went through something, I went through something. If, if we're good friends and we can openly communicate, you know, you, you have those relationships, like what ET and them call anchor relationships, mm -hmm. you know, you, you should be able to learn. You know, I should be able to learn from everybody around me life experience. So why should I have to go through it, the pain? Why should I have to go through the hurt if you did and I'm like, okay, let me not do that. You did, let me not do that, right? So um, draw from other people's experiences in life to help shape your ever changing fluid process and get things started. So um, I think that will wrap it up for this first episode. I really, really appreciate y'all coming out here. Um, remember the process is whatever you make it. Um, and like Bailey said, just get it started. And like Serta said, just keep adjusting it. Um, keep changing your playbook, keep rewriting your playbook, and, and that's it. So I, I wanna thank uh, Serta, Coach Serta, I wanna thank Coach Bailey, Elliot behind the, the, the scenes. Um, just remember, uh, your gift plus your purpose is gonna equal your why. Thank you for turning into the Chalk Talk. Um, the Open Playbook of Life. We'll see you on the next episode where we'll be talking about um, adversity and adversity.